Today, the University of Texas plays in a bowl game for the first time in four years. A quarter century ago, Daryl Royal directed the Longhorns to the national title with their legendary wishbone. Now, all the eyes of Texas are upon Coach John McEvitt as the Longhorns descend upon the Sun Bowl. They're young and aggressive and feature an explosive attack. And today, they look to show the nation that Longhorn football is back. the 90s, North Carolina has established its own football tradition to brag about. Mac Brown has five straight winning seasons and has put North Carolina into an open field of dreams. Now they can place a footprint on their future and tackle college football's next level, starting with a win today. It's the heels and the horns in a hoedown from Old El Paso, next on CBS. Paso begins with a custom fitting at the boot factory. Then you strap them on and head over to the tailgate at the Sun Bowl. You tailgate there Rio Grande style. Sure, the beef and the brats are on the barbie, but so too are the enchiladas and the tamales. Then you head inside to one of the coziest settings in college football. It's the Sun Bowl for the 61st time. Today, North Carolina against Texas. And welcome to West Texas, the friendly town of El Paso, just a few hundred yards from here, the border, and Juarez, Mexico, a few miles down the road, the state line of New Mexico. We're glad to have you with us for North Carolina and Texas, and welcome, everybody. I'm Jim Nance. We're proud to be presenting the Sun Bowl here on CBS for the 27th straight year. You know, we're celebrating an anniversary this year in college football. Ten years ago this season, one of the most magical moments in the history of the game. Boston College playing down in the Orange Bowl against Miami. Doug Flutie rolling out of the pocket. He flings it toward the end zone. And the ball is caught by Phelan as Boston College slays Miami. And Flutie's on his way to winning the Heisman Trophy. That was ten years ago this season. And all of us at CBS are pleased to have Doug Flutie joining us as our CBS college football analyst today. Welcome to the broadcasting business, Doug. It is great to be back around college football. This is tremendous. I've been up in Canada. It's been great to me. It's fun. But when you come back down and you're in a major college football, this is what it's all about. There's nothing like it. Let's talk about a position you're familiar with, quarterback. It's been kind of controversial leading into this game. Who will start at quarterback for North Carolina? Who will start at quarterback for Texas? First, the Tar Heels. Jason Stanisic or Mike Thomas, they decide to go with Mike Thomas today. They decided to go with Mike Thomas primarily because he can make the big play. They run the ball extremely well. What they're looking at at their quarterback, they're looking for big plays. He's only 47% completion, but he doesn't make mistakes, doesn't turn the ball over. And for Texas, Shea Moran started eight games this year. James Brown started three. Wins against Oklahoma, Houston, and Baylor. He threw nine touchdowns the last two weeks of the season. And last night, they gave him the starting nod, James Brown. James Brown deserves it. 110 points in the last two ball games. This guy makes things happen. Almost 70% completions, 12 touchdowns, two picks. His athletic ability is his biggest asset. Can throw the ball off, balance on the run, anything like that. So he makes big plays. Doug, it's bowl time, and these two teams want this game, obviously. But for North Carolina, the importance of it. North Carolina has been in the top 20 for the last three years. They've been to three straight bowl games. Mac Brown has told us this is important to his program because he wants to become a top 10 football team, and this is the opportunity to move up in the ratings. And for John Magovic in Texas? They kind of downplayed it a little bit. I think it's very important to Texas, but John has said that they're in a position where it's the first bowl trip in four years. Only six guys have played on or even been to a bowl game, so he feels that this is more of a reward than anything else for the team. It'll be interesting to see how those philosophies match up today. North Carolina has taken the field. Now Coach Magovic and the Longhorns are ready. It's Texas and North Carolina from El Paso. CBS Sports presents the 1994 Sun Bowl. Today's game is sponsored by John Hancock, official worldwide sponsor of the 1996 Olympic Games, Chrysler, and the new Chrysler Series Sports Sedan, and by Zima, the refreshing alcohol beverage. I've been thinking about... Well, 
Well, the sun's been out most of this day. Now some clouds have rolled in, but it'll live up to its name. The Sun Bowl in El Paso. It's a beautiful day for football. 55 degrees. Forecast for sunny skies. A little wind down there, though. There really was. Uh, I was down on the field beforehand, and I, it looks beautiful, but you step out there, the wind's blowing, it's gusting and swirling a little bit. It could mean the difference of maybe five yards in the kicking game either way. North Carolina has won the toss and will receive these teams meeting for the seventh time. They last met on Christmas Day in 1982 right here in El Paso with Carolina prevailing 26 to 10. They scored 23 unanswered in the fourth quarter that day and it was snowing by the end of that game. No such weather forecast for today. Thank goodness. John McAvick the official leading Texas to a bowl game the for the first time in his third season, six and five, five, five and one, and this year seven and four to grab a five-way share of the Southwest Conference title. And Mac Brown, his first two seasons at North Carolina, the Tar Heels were one and ten, but he has built quite a foundation and a program since. Five straight winning seasons, playing in a bowl now for the third straight year. Like we said, I was talking with Mac the other day. He said, you know, it's just not as much fun anymore because now we have to we have to win ten ball games or it's not a positive season. So he's shooting for the big ratings. He wants to be in the top ten. Bill Dawson puts it on the tee for Texas. And he has to look out for this man, Marcus Wall. Third in the nation in kickoff returns this year. He ran one back for a touchdown and averaged almost 28 yards per run back. He's scary. Every time he touches the ball, it looks like he's going all the way. And he's the guy that is the heart and soul of this Tar Heel team. So Texas to kick off into the win. We have Pac-10 officials today at the Sun Bowl. And this game underway for the 61st time. Short kick. And a fair catch was called by North Carolina. So forget about the run back by Wall. One of his teammates signaled for a fair catch. So they'll start out at the 22-yard line. Dawson's kick at the 22-yard line. The Tar Heels will start. He didn't signal, but uh, one of the short backs, the up back, did signal. And then Marcus takes it on the run. And that could be a delay of game penalty. Marcus was unaware that one of his Tar Heel teammates had called for it. He was ready to go off to the races. Well, they were attempting a pooch kick, it looked like, but he got the ball a little deeper than he wanted to. Here's Mike Thomas starting at quarterback for the Tar Heels. He started for North Carolina in the Peach Bowl two years ago and led them to victory. Leon Johnson is the tailback. And they'll run it right up the middle with Leon Johnson. And a good gain right between the tackles for about six, Norman Watkins makes the hit for Texas. Mike Thomas, if you go back to his high school days in Hamlet, North Carolina, never lost in high school as a starter, has never lost at North Carolina as a starter. In the backfield, Leon Johnson, William Henderson, there'll be some alternating, though, in the backfield. Wall, Barnes, and DeLong, a good blocker, tied in now for North Carolina. They play second and five, and they go with the fullback, Henderson, and maybe a yard is all. Watkins came up to make a hit, along with Thomas Baskin. So third and short coming up for Texas. Two quick tackles for Watkins. Right up the gut. We were told by the defensive line of Texas that you will not get the yardage up the middle between the tackles. Texas is trying to shut them down. The ball was loose on the ground, and uh, the Tar Heels were fortunate to get back on top of it. Boy, it came right back into the arms of Henderson. Third and four for North Carolina. Thomas play action, flings it over to Leon Johnson. He has the first down to the 35-yard line. Now for the rest of the lineup for North Carolina. The line, Thomas. Six yard gain on the play. First and ten. Gathers Don Meredith, Hopgood, and Ferguson. The Texas defense on the line. Brackens, a true freshman, Chris Akins, and Thomas Baskin. Reed Richardson, a freshman, King, and Norman Watkins. First and ten, North Carolina. Out of the eye, Leon Johnson. A gain of maybe two. Baskin hit him first. 
And the secondary for Texas, Paji Allen, Chris Carter, Trey Thomas, and Joey Ellis. Joey Ellis' team is a leader of this team, and he's a big hitter. He's a guy that earlier in the year had a couple of concussions and had a little problem with that, but uh, they are a solid secondary. There's Joey Ellis, senior from Tyler, from the same high school that produced Heisman Trophy winner Earl Campbell for the Longhorns. Second down and eight. Good fake by Thomas. Now fires it out near midfield. The ball is caught by Barnes. Octavius Barnes for 16 yards and a North Carolina first down. Nice action on this. Nice bootleg action off the counter fake. He gets outside. Mike Thomas really has a good passing lane downfield. Can see everything in front of him and put the ball right on the money. 15 yards on the play. Yeah, nice sight lines. He stayed on the move and took a nice shot from Norman Watkins. Curtis Johnson now, Doug, has come into the backfield at tailback for North Carolina. Operating in Texas territory. Top oh. left side the wall. He's wide open inside the 30 and out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Again, it's their play-action passing game. They run the ball extremely well. They come off the play-action. They have the receivers crisscrossing from one side of the field to the other. Wall comes all the way across the field. Little semi-roll right, pulls up. There goes Wall across the field. Nice step into the throw. No problem. 24 yards on the pass play to Marcus Wall, and Thomas has completed his first three passes. For a 47% passing, right? Not bad. First and 10. And they go with Curtis Johnson. And driving those legs inside of the 20. Chris Carter made the tackle. Curtis's forte is more north-south running, power running. They say he's one of the faster guys on the team, one of the top two speed guys. But uh, this year he's been contained a little bit as far as the breakaway runs. He is more of a power back. Both Curtis and Leon Johnson were 1,000-yard rushers a season ago. They fell a little shy of that milestone this season. There's 721 for Johnson. Still a fine year. Second and six. We'll call it from the 20. Ran into his own lineman, the Johnson. And Tyson King was able to finish him off. Tyson King, number On the other, on the flip side of it, Leon is more the north-south guy. Or, I'm sorry. Curtis is more the north-south guy. Leon is a, a slasher cutter, catches the ball out of the backfield extremely well. In fact, the last two seasons, he's had 29 receptions each, which is the most ever by a back in Tar Heel history. Johnson and Johnson, no more tears is what they like to dub themselves. Third down and five on the opening series of the game. Takes the throw right, across the middle. Octavius Barnes in traffic. Makes the catch and picks up the first down. Just a great catch. They run this double screen play where the tailback goes to the right. They threw the ball earlier to Leon. That was covered. He turns back side and throws the ball to Barnes. And Barnes makes a great catch in traffic. It's a great concentration. He looks right, doesn't see it. They go off of the back, comes back side. Great catch in traffic and to get the first down. Barnes, who will double as a basketball player at Carolina this season, picks up the first down catch from the 12. Curtis Johnson right up the middle and touchdown North Carolina on the opening drive. Between the tackles. Curtis Johnson. Just a gaping hole. They blow this wide open. He does nothing but north-south. It's the offensive line of the Tar Heels blowing people out. They march 78 yards and finish the drive 11 yards out with Curtis Johnson. Now the extra point by Tripp Pignetti. Todd Phillips on the snap. Jay Boaz on the hold and the kick is true. What a way to start the game. Great way to start the game. Walks right into the end zone. Blows the hole open from behind.
North Carolina takes the opening kickoff and then drives 78 yards for a touchdown. Curtis Johnson from 11 yards out. Mike Thomas, our 47% uh, passer, was 4 for 4 for 54 yeah. yards in his first drive. And there's also the talk, uh, I was down on the field talking to Mac Brown just before the game. He will play Jason Stanisek. He's going to let Mike start, Mike Thomas throw the first two drives and bring Jason in and see who has the hot hand. It could be tough to pull Mike out. Oh, man, after that drive, how do you pull him? But Mike Thomas, perfect four out of four. And number 39, Curtis Jackson, are deep for the Longhorns. But Texas was in a early situation like this against Baylor in its last game of the regular season. They really were, and uh, Baylor was putting the ball up and down the field, no problem on the Texas defense. But James Brown continued to move the ball from beginning to end and actually blew Baylor out. 63 to 35, the final score in that game. Yeah, at one point, Texas in that game scored 42 unanswered points. There were five touchdowns all totaled in the first quarter of that wild game on Thanksgiving Day. Well, we were expecting fireworks today, and uh, so far, so good. Not to disappoint, Carolina taking that opening kick and driving. Scott Caporelli will handle the kickoff chores for the Tar Heels. Curtis Jackson waiting to receive at the goal line. Also, Rod Walker back there. It's windy down on the field. The ball's blown off the tee twice now. So, a little assist coming up from Terry Phillips. And he'll be booting this one downwind. Actually, in pregame, this would be into the face of the wind, so the wind has changed. But flags are blowing right to left for us. Now, let's see if Texas has an answer to North Carolina's hot start. It'll touch the football for the first time. Not a very big kick at all. Jackson at the 10. Jackson with room at the 20. And out to the 30. James Brown, redshirt freshman from Beaumont, Texas. Amazing stats. 12 touchdowns thrown this season. Only two interceptions. In the backfield, Priest Holmes with Roderick Walker, Eric Jackson, and Lavelle Pinckney. What a target they are. Steve Bradley at the tight end. On the line, Blake Brockermeyer has a big NFL future. On that left side, John Elmore, Dan Neal, Corby Brooks, and Joe Phillips. Texas operating on offense for the first time today from its own 30. Brown with pressure. Looks left side. They set him up just right. Priest Holmes across the 40. Into North Carolina territory. Inside of the 40 and down at the 37. Beautifully set up screen. The, the big part of North Carolina's defense is their pass rush, their defensive ends. They come right out with a screen to try to slow down that pass rush. Here they come off the corners. James Brown gives ground, gives ground, turns, gets the ball to Priest, and he's off and running. Season long, Holmes caught five passes in all for a total of 10 yards. That one for 33 and a first at the Tar Heel 37. Brown will fire again. This time, picked off and some room ahead. It's Eddie Mason for North Carolina. He tried to force the curl route. Strong safety. I believe it was a strong safety that got a hand on the ball and tipped it. Let's see it from the eyes of James Brown here from the from the backside on the replay. James came back. He had a man in the flat and a curl route, and the ball just gets tipped. He, he shouldn't have thrown this ball. It was, it was too tight a seam. Mike Morton, middle linebacker, with the tip, and Mason with the interception. So part of that 3M company on defense, the linebacking core, combining, in fact, on that in interception of James Brown. Yes. James had only thrown two interceptions all year. He had a streak of 67 straight without a pick before that one. Now, running the option. Mike Thomas, will he give it up? No, he'll keep it for a gain of about three. 
Norman Watkins manning that side for the Longhorns. Texas strung that out pretty well. He made the right decision to keep the ball. He just couldn't, didn't quite have the speed to get to the crease. Mac Brown said there's a little bit of a misconception about how often we really run the option. Yeah, they, they feel they run the ball inside more often, run power lead type of plays, and they run the option occasionally to make teams defend it and worry about it. Out of the eye, Leon Johnson back at the tailback position. Rolling out, wide open again. It's Marcus Wall for a first down at the Texas 36. Marcus Wall. Gain of 14. Number 16, Chris Carter. All right. Stops the Longhorn. Marcus Wall. It's Joey Ellis coming off the corner here. Joey is going to be on a blitz. It's picked up, which leaves no underneath coverage over the here. The 36 yard line, first and 10 for the Tar Heels. The sprint out on the corner, and Marcus Wall just sits it down nice and easy, and it's an easy completion. Wall's second catch, and now Leon Johnson back running the football. Nice room ahead to the 26. That's near the first down yardage. Mike Hopgood helped clear that right side for Leon. Yeah, Leon had a lot of open spaces there. He took it in off tackle, bounced it outside, so there was no problem there getting outside. Mike Hobgood with the big block on the play. Leon Johnson grew up as a big Clemson fan. Wanted to go to Clemson and play quarterback for the Tigers. They call him the natural at North Carolina. And here he is. No room this time. And they'll face third and short. Number 17, Trey Thomas. In North again Carolina, eight and three. Ranked 17th, in fact, in the Bowl Coalition poll. Five and three in conference. Little or no gain on the play. 19th bowl appearance Third today for North Carolina. For the well, Mac Brown says half the teams ahead of them are in bowl games and they're going to have to lose and they can move up from that 17th position. He would love to get up to number 10 in the rankings. Very aware of the rankings coming into this game. Watching closely, Thomas. Oh, a, not a very wise choice that time. He picks it after already picking up the first down. Very indecisive on what to do. And Thomas right. recovered. Third and short, third and medium. He should tuck this ball under and go for the first down. He's very indecisive. The, they play it loosely, feather it out, and he's indecisive on what to do with the football. Tuck it away, put your head down, try to get that first. It's a forward lateral, Doug, because that ball was... Flung forward. Thomas was able to recover. Be a five yard penalty and loss of down. I honestly don't believe he was trying to pitch the ball. I think he had it extended in his hand and was thinking about pitching it when he got hit and the ball jumps out of his hand. So he's starting to pitch it. Oh, no, he did. He started to flip the football. So it was an illegal forward pass. Robert Reed had it bounce right off his face mask. And uh, that'll back North Carolina to the 28. And they will not pick up the first down since it's a loss of down. So they had the yardage before that ill-advised toss. They'll try a field goal attempt by Tripp Pignetti. Career long of 47. This is a 45-yard kick downwind. No. During pregame, I talked to Tripp, and he said that he'd feel more comfortable kicking the long field goals going the other way. But then again, at that time, the wind was blowing the other way. So Brown's interception does not result in any North Carolina points. It remains 7 nothing. North the Carolina. Association promotes a number of events. We hope you enjoy the Sierra Medical Center. With 132 frisky horses... Tingles. Head and shoulders doesn't. Both have effective dandruff medicine, but Denerex has something extra that tingles, feels fresh. That's why I started using Denerex. No flakes, no itch. Denerex, the serious dandruff shampoo. At the Sun Bowl in El Paso, North Carolina and Texas, 7-7 in the first. Jim Nance along with Doug Flutie and Andrea Joyce along as well. We're glad to have you with us for the 61st edition of the Sun Bowl. 
North Carolina. They took the opening drive here. Marched right in for a touchdown. But Texas has come right back. The ball has gone up and down the field. We, we anticipated a lot of offense. Four, Beck Brown said during the week that a lot of times when that happens, defenses hear it all week long and get fired up and come out and shut it down. But on the other side, Makovic said, hey, we got 90 plays. We're just going to outscore them. And that's what it looks like so far. He says, we're going to use all 90 plays. We're just going to try to outscore them today. And that's what everyone was hoping for here. An explosive scene, and it's been the case so far. Bill Dawson to kick again. A short one, Wall at the 22. And out to the 35. I'll tell you what, Marcus Wall for a little guy, he lays it up in there. Marcus Wall is a small guy, only 165 pounds, 5 foot 10. But uh, totally fearless. Well, as you said, Doug, Jason Stanisek. On the third series of the game, they bring in the all-time passer for North Carolina, Jason Stanisek. He holds records for total offense, career attempts, career completions, and total yards. 24-9 as a starter. Curtis Johnson is his tailback. Stanisek executes the option to Johnson for about seven. Joey Ellis bumps him out. That's the difference with Jason. He runs the option much better than Mike Thomas. He does an excellent job coming off the play fake of accelerating to get to the defensive end, or in this case, a linebacker, to make him come towards him so he can pitch the ball, get the corner. Jason was flattened by Robert Reed after the pitch, but he's fine and faces second down and three. Malcolm Marshall at fullback, Curtis Johnson the tailback. Johnson, first down, to the 50. Nice block by the fullback, Marshall. Tackled in midfield by number 40. He does a nice job here, dipping and bouncing to the outside and then slipping through an arm tackle. There wasn't a lot there that time, and that's the power running of Curtis. Curtis Johnson. And Mike Thomas getting a little extra padding on that right knee. First down from the 50. Texas showing blitz. Curtis Johnson, he is dropped for a loss. Chris Aiken, a freshman, a true freshman from Paris, Texas, over 300 pounds, and what a big future. Joey, Store for this man. Joey Ellis jumped up into the front there, became an eight-man front for Texas. He's playing the run. North Carolina obviously has been running the ball extremely well. Texas decided let's try some eight-man front to shut down that running game. Akins drops him for a one-yard loss, so second and 11. Delay give to Johnson. Down to the 43 of Texas. Johnson carries for the Tar Heels. We talked about all those records that Stanisek set during his career. He broke a couple that belonged to the legendary Charlie Choo Choo Justice, two-time runner-up for the Heisman, two-time All-America, wearing that uniform number of Doug Flutie. 22. Is that why you wore 22 at BC? Oh, exactly. Definitely. <laughs> Gotta love that number. I tell you, they love Choo Choo. We uh, sent along our best wishes to him today. Third down and three. A late give and a loss on the play. Trey Thomas ran right down the line with him, and they stop him short. Fourth down coming up. Excellent job of stringing it out by Texas. Jason tried and tried to get the corner, tried to get out there and draw. Couldn't get all the way out. The pitch relationship at the last second is too close. 17 can play both the quarterback, and then he gets to the pitch back. He's in position right now where he needs to make the pitch. The pitch is made. But so is the tackle by Thomas. So a punting situation, and Mike Thomas, starting quarterback, is also the punter for North Carolina, and a good one. Chris Carter back for Texas. Inside of the 20, fair catch made at the 17. Mac Brown says, I think Mike Thomas has the leg to be an NFL punter. He also stated that he thinks he's a better punter when he is starting and playing. He gets into the game more. He gets the emotional level going. So I don't know if this counts. Does it count? He started, but he's not playing at the moment. Yeah, we'll count it. We'll count it. And that's uh, you know, not as deep as he would have liked to have pinned Texas there, but still inside of the 20. So yeah. Texas at the 17. 
This is now, all total, the sixth possession of the game for these two teams. Every time, the other team has advanced it into the other side of the field. Brees home for five. For 33, Brees Holmes carries for the Longhorns. Way Holmes is running the football here in the first quarter. You mentioned that after opening the season with three straight 100-yard efforts, he was a little bit banged up, beaten up, and didn't have a huge rest of the year. At 190 pounds, it's very difficult to carry the ball 25, 30 times a game, and that's the type of games he was having the first part of the season. And, uh, you know, got little nicks here and there. It just wasn't quite the same, and now he's had a chance to rest a little before the bowl game, opportunity to, to be healthy. Whistle on the field. Timeout, Carolina. Timeout called by North Carolina. Now, there was a bizarre uh, moment, really, in the season for John Makovic and Texas. It came against Colorado, and Makovic was taken out on this play and suffered a concussion. Watch him on the sideline get hit by one of his own players. That's coach right there. And he suffered a concussion that really lingered for about 30 days, and he felt it harnessed his ability to coach. He really did. He said he didn't have the enthusiasm. He kind of just was in a daze or in a fog, going through the motions for the entire month. And all of a sudden, one day in practice, he broke out of it. He uh, said he recognized something that went wrong in practice, and then up until that point, he kept his mouth shut. And uh, he lost it a little bit on the field and got emotionally back into it. And now since then has decided I'm going to become more involved in this offense. Started calling the plays offensively. And they've done extremely well. It also, Doug, was during that time of what you call post-concussion syndrome where Texas reached the, the bottom of its season. Lost uh, the game against Rice. And also suffered a loss against Texas Tech and Texas A&M. And there was a controversial time for the team. But they have fought their way out of it and, and really seem to hit on all cylinders in the last couple of weeks of the season. There's also a decision made to suspend a couple of players that were out past curfew along those lines. So that was a hard time for them. But with the reemergence of James Brown at quarterback at the end of this season, they put it back together. Second and four. Carolina had to call timeout. They had only ten men on the field. And look at the run by Holmes again. Priest Holmes for big yardage to the 37. A 14-yard gain this time. Up by number 25, Terry right Phillips. tackle Joe Phillips made a nice block on this play, allowing Free to get up and through. He shows great footwork, just great agile athletic ability. Nice at the point of attack. Well, Marcus Jones, who is probably their best defensive player. Holmes picking up good yardage here in the first quarter, already 36 yards on the ground, and the touchdown for Texas. Now they go to two tight ends. This is a running formation for Texas. On first down. Brown will run it. Open field ahead. Tiptoes out of bounds. Backwards, I should add, at the 48. First down and a gain of 11. What a good block over there on that side by Eric Jackson. James Brown just makes it look so easy. He's, he's very relaxed out on the field, moving around, comes off the play action. He actually had the tight end open in the flat, but sees the crease, steps up. Look at how relaxed. He better cut that ball away, though. Right there, get some nice blocks downfield. Last block by Jackson. How nonchalant can you be? <laughs> very comfortable. He's in his own little world out there, his own little playground. Yep. And poised for the freshman. It has Texas near midfield and another first down. Reverse. It is, in fact, to Eric Jackson. For six yards. Nine, Eric Jackson. Again, now, every possession in this first quarter has moved into the opponent's territory. Both, both offenses moving the ball and not just throwing the ball or running. They're mixing it up. They're, both teams are moving the ball extremely well, running and throwing. And, uh, Texas, I think, is more apt to so, show some razzle-dazzle. We were talking. They have a couple of trick plays in their book. John Magovic has a reputation for some flair on offense. Texas has 85 yards through the air and 58 on the ground so far. Second down. And four. Left side. Pass a little low for Fitzgerald. Pass is incomplete intended for number 81, Pat Fitzgerald. Let's profile the Longhorns on the season, Doug. Number 47. Team that went seven and four and shared a Southwest Conference title with A&M ineligible, a five-way tie for first. 
Five-way tie, share the title. you got to love that. <laughs> but uh, they are excited to be back in the bowl picture, and uh, they're looking for, for big things. I'll tell you what, early in the season, they were thinking cotton all the way. Last bowl appearance was in the cotton on January 1, 91. Third down and four. Fumble snap. Brown fumbles the snap and kneels down. He hit the ground, so the play is dead right there at the 46-yard line. Now James has a tendency of doing that. I'm, I'm filming him. There were a couple of plays when he fumbled a snap or when defensive linemen jumped offside or his offensive linemen were moving that he just took the ball, put his knee on the ground and kind of ended the play. You got to try to make a little bit of an effort there to stay on your feet and scoop the ball up and continue with the play if you can. You don't want to turn over, obviously. So that stalls the Texas drive. And Dwayne Vasek will punt. Marcus Wall on the return, standing at the 10-yard line. He ran one back this year for a touchdown. Basic gets the job done. They down it at the 12-yard line. Robert Crenshaw touches it at the 12. The wind must really be blowing hard right to left for us. The ball is not is not carrying when, when they're taking the ball to our right. And uh, Marcus needed to make a better effort at fielding that kick, but I think because of the wind conditions, he really just decided to let that thing bounce. We have time perhaps for one more play here in the first quarter with North Carolina and Texas tied 7-7. Stanisic is the quarterback for the second straight series. Leon Johnson, the tailback. Stanisic. Pass a little behind Octavius Barnes at the 30. There was a big hole on the back side, and Octavius continued to run across the field. Number 16, Chris Carter on the cover. Jason was trying to get him to settle down. There's a big Second hole on the back ten. side here. When Jason rolls right, the post clears it out. There's a big old hole. Now sit it down. Jason can't lead him because of the linebackers on the other side of the field. That was the first incompletion of the game for the Tar Heels. Thomas 5 of 5 and Stanisic with his first attempt right there. Leon Johnson breaks the tackle at the line. And out of bounds at the 17. A hard-earned five yards to end the first quarter. CBS Sports coverage of the 1994 Sun Bowl will continue after this message and a word from your local station, 7-7 at the Sun Bowl. To, to take care of her. As the second quarter begins... We'll come back for the start of the second quarter. From Sun City in El Paso, Texas. Third down and five. Stanisic with nowhere to go. Ball in the air. Watkins has it. Alan Hoffman. Ball three on the goal line. And let's see. Texas says it has a touchdown. Indeed. Touchdown, Longhorns. Did not have a prayer on this. He started to roll out, got pulled up, and the backside hit. The ball went flying. Norman Watson recovers his own fumble for the Texas touchdown. He got too excited. He's running into the end zone and decides to drop the football. Great recovery, though. He showed... Good awareness to catch the ball and continue to run toward the end zone, but uh, I don't know what happened under the scramble, but I think he still got the touchdown. Norman Watkins picks the ball up in the air after a brutal hit on the quarterback. That was a wild one. Now the extra point drive by Phil Dawson. Texas. It was Thomas Baskins coming from the back side, or I'm sorry, he's in the front side. We're going to pull out, we roll up, rolling out and pulling up, and Baskins gets the pressure. No, it wasn't the backside.
backside hit. It was the backside hit by Brackens. Brackens came in from the backside, got the big pop, and the ball was loose. Would have been a little easier if Norman Watkins just hold on, hold on to the ball and run it in, but he had to make it fun. From the end zone, gets pulled up, has to stop, and boom, from the backside, the ball is loose. Watkins gets too excited, falls back on the ground, and Texas gets the touchdown. Thanks, they got to be happy that Watkins was able to recover his own fumble. Uh, you, get, you don't get those opportunities too often, and uh, we were... <laughs> We were talking to him. Cujo, baby. We were talking to uh, Thomas Baskin yeah. about the, the possibility of defensive players scoring touchdowns and the celebrating and all that. So uh, they got their opportunity defensively. Hey, Mom. How you doing, Jordan? Love you, baby. <laughs> Said we wanted to have a chance to express ourselves in this game. And